bodyguard to Master Koga of the Yiga Clan, Suga is an imposing warrior and master swordsman. Finally joining the cast in Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity's second DLC pack, Suga brings his unique playstyle to bear against your enemies. And in the right hands, he can be stunningly powerful. Let's find out what this actually competent ninja can do. Suga's regular attack string consists of seven attacks. He will draw his blades and slice with both, cut to the left, double slash to the right, do a double forward slash again, spin while cutting to the left, spin again while cutting to the right, and finish with a little hop and a big slash downwards. Suga's regular attack string is great, but it doesn't have a lot of range to it, which actually does fit with his playstyle, which is that of a duelist. Unlike the first Hyrule Warriors, which had large KO count requirements in nearly every mission, Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity's mechanics allow this kind of duelist playstyle to really shine, where the missions usually revolve around cutting down large enemies as quickly as possible. While I'm here, I may as well cover Suga's unique mechanic, which also supports this duelist playstyle. When used, Suga will enter his unseeing counter stance, which, if hit by an enemy during the early part of it, will cause him both to immediately counter attack and also gain one charge on his unseeing gauge. Additionally, Suga can then pick up any combo he was in right where he left off after doing the counter move. There are three levels of charge to his unseeing gauge, and if you get it to full, Suga's regular attacks will become more powerful, incorporating extra hits for the same amount of work. However, if you are damaged at any time while you hold one of these charges, they will be erased and go back to zero. This mechanic alone raises the skill ceiling on Suga incredibly high, and in the right situation in the hands of a skilled user, Suga pretty much never needs to pause his onslaughts, allowing him to be one of the deadliest characters on the roster for fighting any bosses. Now let's move on to his other regular attacks. Starting with his dashes, Suga's regular dash attack will have him do a double slash with his swords, causing him to come to a stop where he can then transition to his other attacks. For his strong dash attack, Suga will do a double thrust with his swords before continuing his run. Suga's regular aerial string will have him do a simple three cut combo midair, and if you choose to use the strong aerial attack, he will do a flurry of savage cuts while flying back down to the ground. Last up, let's cover his Sheikah Slate runes. For his Stasis rune, Suga will time lock the enemies in front of him before doing a quick flurry of attacks and putting his swords away. Once he puts his swords away, the enemy's time lock will end early. A great use of this rune is to stasis your enemies while their weak point gauge is up. And keep in mind that after a successful counter, this will also force out enemy weak point gauges. In whatever way that you time lock their weak points, you probably just want to let the animation play out, as the multiple attacks on this do a great job of breaking down your enemies. Also, you can dodge cancel out before Suga puts his swords away and get a little bit more damage in there as well. Next up, for his Cryonis rune, Suga will create an ice block right in front of himself, which if you follow up with the strong attack button, he will then carve into a likeness of Master Koga, and then give the statue a bow. This doesn't do any outright damage, but if an enemy happens to hit the statue of Koga with an attack, Suga will freak out and do an even bigger counterattack than normal. However, keep in mind, if you do extend this rune to allow the sculpture of Koga to appear, you cannot dodge cancel out until the animation is finished, and the ice will disappear right away after that, which is a lot sooner than normal. Suga's Magnesis rune is very simple. It only responds when there is something metal to grab, after which he will make big metal swords and swing them. Last up, for his remote bomb rune, Suga will plant a bomb into the floor that will travel forward until it gets underneath something, where it will then spring out of the ground and explode. With Suga's most basic moves covered, let's move on to his strong attacks next. Suga's first strong attack has him ready an exploding kunai and throw it, where it will then explode either at its max range or upon hitting an enemy. While this isn't much damage, it does give Suga a ranged option for when you're just waiting for your moment to charge into an enemy's face. However, considering his counter move, you should pretty much always be charging into your enemy's face and not really needing to worry about it. For Suga's second strong attack, he will do a spinning attack into the air, after which you can then incorporate any of his regular aerial attacks or his strong aerial finisher. 
For his third strong attack, Suga will fly forward, moving and cutting through his enemies incredibly fast, until a large series of cuts at the end. For his fourth strong attack, Suga will ready his blade and then do a big cut to the right and then to the left, extending far further than normal slashes. Next up for his fifth combo, Suga will do a similar stance to his fourth, but this time draw both swords, which causes a flurry of cuts to appear afterwards, during which you are free to continue controlling Suga doing different stuff. Enemies hit by the first part of this are slowed before the extra series of cuts appears, which can make following up on this very easy if you can time it just right. Last up, Suga's sixth and final strong attack will have him create a tornado to his front that will start to travel forwards, before he readies his swords for a large vertical slash that cuts right through it. The second part of this attack will reveal enemy weak point gauges, however the tornado alone will also reveal weak point gauges just before it disappears. Keep in mind, if you can land both parts of this, enemy weak point gauges are especially wrecked. While Suga's main strength lies more in his normal attacks and amazing counterattack, this is not a bad collection of strong attacks in the slightest. He has a range of options that give him strength in many different situations, making him just really solid all around. Now that we've covered all of his attacks, let's move on to his weapons and weapon build recommendation next. <laughs> Suga has three possible weapons, and going from weakest to strongest, they are his Swords of Ferocity, Swords of Devotion, and Swords of Valiance. I'll put a chart up on screen right now to show off his hidden level 25 and 30 seals, but for my weapon build recommendation today, I'm going to be focusing on his Swords of Valiance. Given that his swords already come with a star-shaped strong attack damage seal and a square-shaped auto-critical hit after combo seal, this recommendation is going to be pretty predictable. You will want three attack speed seals and one star shape to either regular attack damage or strong attack damage, or the opposite, with only one attack speed seal and three more regular slash strong attack damage seals. Personally, I do like giving Suga more regular attack damage, as part of the fun of his playstyle is seeing how long I can go with a full three unseeing counter charges, but more attack speed consistently is just one of the better things you can give every character in this game. And just like that, we have Suga all covered. Let's put everything together to see where he ends up. Suga to me is a DLC playstyle done just about perfectly. It isn't especially broken in any way, but in the hands of a skilled player or a player who has spent enough time with the game to want to buy the DLC, it rewards all that time investment with a simple fighting style that becomes more powerful the more knowledge you have about the game and its enemies. I personally have already gotten used to timed dodges throughout all of my fights, but the rewards for using Suga's counter effectively are so enticing that they give me a reason to be an even better player than before. It doesn't matter what difficulty you're playing at, Suga can be absolutely untouchable in a way that no one else in the cast can replicate. Outside of his defining counter mechanics, it would make sense for Suga to then have a lackluster moveset, but no, he's no slouch in that area either. While I wouldn't say that his weak point revealer is particularly great, proper countering can make this unnecessary, so it works out in the end. Truly, Suga is a devastatingly powerful addition to the cast, and one of my personal favorites to ever be added in any Warriors DLC. But I'd like to know, what are your thoughts on Suga? Be sure to let me know in the comments below, and also if there was anything big that I missed, go ahead and drop that down below as well. I'll be making a pinned comment on this video if there was anything big that I may have forgotten about. As always, thank you so much for watching everybody, and I hope to see you next time. Big thank you to my top patrons DW7 Still Rules, Henry Gutierrez, and Ryan Poe, as well as to all of my other patrons on Patreon. If you would like to support this channel and my main channel Shanebrained, check out the links in the description. Thank you all very much.